Hello everyone, so today I've got something a little bit different for you. It's fermentation, but not as you normally know it on this channel. Today, we're making fermented hot sauce. So, fermented hot sauce. It's basically a sauce that's produced using chilies that have been fermented using lactobacillus, which is a naturally occurring bacteria. You'll find that on the skins of all sorts of different fruits and vegetables. And if you put those um, ingredients into a certain environment, that bacteria is gonna thrive and create a souring effect. It will drop the pH of the liquid that they're in and effectively pickle those ingredients for you. So this process takes the chilies, pickles them using that lacto-fermentation process and then combines them with some other ingredients to produce a hot sauce. It's really simple, nice and easy to do, and you do get some really decent results out of it at the end as well, which isn't uh, quite as easy to produce using just a simple cooked hot sauce. So a lot of hot sauces you can make just by essentially blending the chilies up and mixing them with vinegar and other ingredients, which is the probably the simplest and quickest way to produce a hot sauce but you'll get a lot of uh, different flavours and depth of flavour with fermented hot sauces. It can also help to reduce the, the heat from the chilies a little bit as well. So it kind of tempers some of the more uh, spicy chilies that you might use for this. So if you're not sure what fermented hot sauces are like or what lacto-fermented foods taste like, you've more than likely tried some commercial sauces which use this process. The most famous one of all probably is Tabasco sauce, which is uh, made with fermented Tabasco chilies, funnily enough. So that's a obvious example. It's not necessarily the best tasting chili sauce in the world. It's pretty basic, really. It does just sort of give you, you know, heat and not a lot else, to be honest, in my opinion. Uh, but there's plenty of other commercial ones that use this process as well. So any sauce which has uh, on the labeling something along the lines of uh, using aged chilies or fermented chilies will be made using this process. So there's uh, things like sriracha sauce, uh, I believe Cholula, and quite a few others which you will come across will use fermentation at some stage. As I said, the commercial sources will have to stop the fermentation, so they're normally cooked after fermentation in order to stop that process so that they will be uh, stable and they're not going to potentially explode in the bottles later on. But with uh, the version I'm making today, it's going to be left as a live product so the fermentation can continue and the flavour can actually develop over time as well. So there's a little bit of a difference between the homemade and the commercial versions in that sense. Although obviously you can cook the sauce afterwards if you want to in order to stop the fermentation and uh, stabilise it for packaging if that's what you would prefer to do. But uh, yeah, bear that in mind because that's quite important afterwards that you remember that the product can continue fermenting even after you've blended it up and added the other ingredients to it. Okay, so let's get into the footage and I'll go through the process as we uh, as we go through the video of me making this sauce. So enjoy. So these are the uh, chilies that I was using for this sauce. This is actually a Thai dragon chili plant. So these are pretty hot. They're not super hot chilies by any measure, but they're... Um, probably a notch below kind of habaneros so they're up to about 100,000 scovilles which is hot enough for me uh, so in the sauce I was using about 30 or 40 ish I can't remember exactly how many of those chilies but obviously all the nice glossy red ripe ones that were ready to go there a head of uh, garlic cloves there so all peeled and prepped ready and just to sort of bulk it out a bit and to hopefully tame the heat from the chilies a little, some sweet peppers as well. So obviously just prepping these, you want to chop things up. Uh, it doesn't need to be too delicately done. So just uh, nice chunky bits of the peppers. And then when we get onto the chilies, we just need to take the ends off of those and split them down the middle. So the idea is you want to make sure that when you put these into the brine, that the liquid is going to be able to get into all of the gaps and spaces inside the chili uh, and you're not going to create any air pockets so you don't really want to leave them uh, whole for that reason and uh, obviously it helps the liquid just to penetrate into the fruit as well so once those are all done i just gave the garlic cloves a little bit of a squish with the flat of the blade 
just to make it uh, easier for the brine to get into those and to release the flavor. Then we need our jar. So this is a uh, jar that I'm just reusing from some pickles or something like that. It's about 600 mil capacity. So stuff all of your ingredients into there. You might want to give them a little squish down. I was just using the rolling pin in this case just to make sure they all got in there. And we can now add our brine into it. So we're going to make up a brine of about 3% concentration. I'm using kosher sea salt as you can see here. There's 500 mils of water which means for a 3% solution, we want about 15 grams of salt. We're then obviously gonna to top up the jar with the brine. The idea here is the brine is gonna allow the lactobacteria to grow, but prevent other unwanted bacteria and molds from growing. Uh, I'm using a cabbage leaf here just to hold the rest of the ingredients down under the brine. So some people will use weights or bags of water to weigh down the top of it, but the cabbage leaf method seems to work all right for me and a bit of cling film and a hairband around the top just to keep it sealed uh, enough so that the co2 that is generated when it ferments will be released but it's not going to let anything else in so this is what's happened after two weeks at room temperature you can see the liquid has turned cloudy and there's some yeasty looking stuff floating around on the top that's absolutely fine unless you're seeing any mold or other obvious bad things in there you don't need to worry about it you will see some kind of cloudy white yeasty like stuff in there uh, you can see a bit of it at the bottom of the jar so I basically just strained that through but reserved the liquids and I've added about 50 mils of that back into a blender with the strained ingredients and just whizzing that up I'm then adding about the same amount of cider vinegar and I'm not giving exact measurements here because really you're just looking to get the consistency right rather than looking for a specific amount. That was a tiny little drizzle of olive oil that went in as well. And again, I'm just trying to get it to this sort of consistency here, where it's a nice pouring consistency, kind of coats the back of the spoon. And then once you're happy that it's all whizzed up, you can get it into your jars. So I've got a couple of bottles worth out of this. And as you can see, lovely cover, looks good, should taste great. So the finished product, let's give it a taste test and see how it's come along. This has been in the bottle for a few weeks now. So there's been a good amount of time for it to mature and develop in flavor and uh, maybe mellow a little bit as well because the chilies that went into this are pretty potent. As I said in the video, they're not like super hot or anything, but they're certainly fairly feisty. Uh, so yeah, I may regret this, but let's uh, let's give this a taste. So <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> yeah, those uh, those Thai dragons are no joke. <laughs> it's, um, even though that sauce was not a hundred percent chilies there was a mix of other peppers in there and other ingredients it's still definitely got a good amount of kick to it it's not crazy hot but i'm not a uh you know suicidal sort of chili head that eats the you know super spicy chilies um or really has any of the extreme heat sources but this is definitely fairly potent in terms of what i was expecting anyway uh, but it is very nice there's a real nice tang to that good bit of fruitiness as well and uh, the garlic's coming through as well which is really good so I do like that nice sort of garlicky kick on the hot sauce too. Uh, surprisingly fruity actually considering there wasn't any um, fruit in it apart from the peppers and the chilies themselves so I think the uh, the addition of the sweet peppers there was a good idea just to give it another layer of flavour in that sense um, and a little bit of honey which was added as well just to sweeten it up a little bit because otherwise i think it might have been a little bit on the uh on the raw side in terms of the heat and so on so yeah pretty good uh got a little bit of a sort of hint of kind of sriracha to it but also um some of the more kind of vinegary kind of louisiana style sauces as well but with uh, that big kick of garlic that i mentioned so that's a, a decent recipe as far as I'm concerned, and I would definitely try that again. 
that's going to work really well on you know hot wings and all the sort of classic things like that. In fact, I reckon that would be a really good base for a buffalo sauce. So blending that up with a little bit of butter or something like that. Anyway, so my head hasn't exploded. There's not steam coming out my ears, but that was uh, a little bit warmer than maybe I was expecting after that amount of time to uh, to mellow out. And uh, yeah, the fairly modest amount of chilies that went in there. But uh, obviously you can control the heat with the different types of chilies or chili strains that you put in there. So you can do this from, you know, really mild all the way up to fearsomely hot, uh, blow your head off type stuff. Um, but yeah, that's lacto fermented hot sauce. I hope you enjoyed that video and uh, let me know if you have been doing anything similar with your harvest of chilies this year, if you're a chili grower or if you uh, do this with any other ingredients or any other kind of lacto fermented foods. Nice one. Cheers, guys. I'm the dude. So that's what you call me, you know, uh, that or uh, his dudeness or uh, duder or, uh, you know, El Duderino, if you're not into the whole brevity thing.